Good morning everyone, it's Alexander. Today let's talk a little bit about how the dungeons work and how you can skip the entire campaign in Last Epoch. Or if you should do this at all. So the first way is really, or there are two ways to use dungeons in this game. One is to skip the campaign mostly for your alt alternative characters. Although this isn't really recommended because <laughs> this whole thing ends up a little bit confusing. So I'm going to talk about this in a second. Or to get bonuses for your characters, especially in the late game. So the first thing is you you, you find these keys eventually. It's mostly these three keys, there are three dungeons. The Lightless Arbor Key, that's the first one. Then you have the Soulfire Bastion Key, that's the second one. And then the last one is the Temporal Sanctum Key, right? And these are different in how they work. The key thing is to know if you find the key, you can just right click on it, right? Like the Lightless Arbor, for, for example, I right click on it. Then it brings me directly to the place where this dungeon is on the map in the responsible era. You can tell I haven't been here with this character yet because I didn't skip with this character um, through the campaign with the Lightless Arbor dungeon. So what you would do, and it even says down here with this winged boot, alternate leveling path. This route will bypass many areas but requires access to a completion of Lightless Arbor. Well, the Lightless Arbor dungeon is the one where it's very dark and you have this ember. So every dungeon has its own sort of thing, specific, uh, specific mechanics. And in this, it's very dark and mobs that are outside the light you have with you are almost unkillable. They have a lot of HP and do way more damage. So you got to work with the, with the light. And at the end, you get specific items from that, from the Titan, the Hollow Titan. Specifically, the crit ones, like the face of the mountain and the core of the mountain, the, these items. All right, I chose my second character here, or my main one, to actually show you. This is a Lightless Arbor dungeon. You get to here from the Shrouded Ridge after surface and the Ruined Era. And then when you hear this, this lady tells you how it's done. But then you go to this big door and you need a key, right? This is the Lightless Arbor key. You put it in, you say enter, and then you have to choose the dungeon tier. Right, tier 1 is level 20. That's roughly what level you need, although it's still going to be tough if you're level 20. And unless you have a super insane build already, it's going to be tough to do this. And so you should be at least 10 levels higher than this, then it's kind of easy. And there's also a key thing. Tier 4, for example, usually drops the best items. For example, the core of the mountain, which is your, your body armor you get from this. Um, this only drops on tier 4. Right. So... When you want to skip the campaign, you obviously do the tier 1. This is also the first one. This is even available when you do it the first time. But you also have to realize you can't even do this the first time you play through the game, right? This is only to skip the campaign later. Because you need these keys and they drop randomly later in game more often, especially. And once you are through this dungeon, we can check this out here. It says the Corrupted Lake. Then you get to the... I think it was the Imperial Era. Yep. You come out here at the Risen Lake. So you skipped most of the campaign up to this point. You can then even go straight to the felled wood into the Soulfire Bastion, which is the next dungeon. You can do this if you want. And then after the Soulfire Bastion dungeon, you come out here. Soulfire Bastion exit even says it in the Divine Era. This is all the Herborea snowy thing. And right next to the arena, which I wouldn't recommend at all, by the way. <laughs> and then from here... It's a little bit difficult after that if you want to do the third dungeon which is a temporal sanctum you would have to go back to majelica there it is you have to do so you have to come back to the risen lake even if you did a soul fire dungeon come back to imperial fatima and the imperial dreadnought and kill the dreadnought over here uh, not dreadnought the admiral and then you come out at the bottom here in the shining calf then you have to go to Majelka, because there you get a side quest which opens this time rift, which gets you to the third dungeon, which is the Temporal Sanctum. So it's not that easy to go through it, it's a little bit difficult. You have to do this even if you did the Soulfire Bastion dungeon already, otherwise, you can't do the third one. It's a bit weird. So, what you really do is the first time you have to play through the campaign, that's how it works, and then once you level this character up enough, you can go through these dungeons to skip the campaign. However, again, this is not really recommended because you have to go through all these dungeons and then you still have to do your quest, 
quests, like your side quests, that give you the idle slots. Because if you just do the dungeons, you don't open these, because these are opened with side quests. You can do this afterwards, of course, but still, um, it's, it's a bit weird. You gotta get to the abode in the Divine Era. Sorry, uh, Imperial, the Oracle's abode. This is where you get the quest to actually open this up. And then in the ruined area, if you go through this, this rift, you get here to the Temporal Sanctum. And this is really the most important dungeon, I would say, the Temporal Sanctum, because this one is the one that makes it possible for you to make these legendary items. If you have an item with a legendary potential, like, for example, this one, it has two legendary pot potential on it, then you can craft an exalted item into it and this is only possible in the temporal sanctum dungeon once you beat the end boss in that dungeon so this is the main thing of the existence for this dungeon at all the lightless arbor is really only farmed for the peak of the mountain for example this this helmet and the other ones because they are great but once you have them most people don't really play that dungeon anymore in the soulfire bastion you can gamble unique items that sometimes Funny, and this is also why, how I got this exemption is with two LP, by the way, which is very lucky. So this is kind of the bonus of this. But yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the details of the dungeons. For example, the, um, the Lightless Arbor, at the end, you get to choose caches and you can spend gold for them. Yeah, you can spend gold on the caches to get better benefits. However, I would not do this before you reach tier 3, because... This is like, it costs you hundreds of thousands of gold to get anything good out, it, out of it. And at these tiers, it kind of sucks in general. So if you do tier 3 or 4, then you can do, you can spend some money on it. But outside of that, I wouldn't really do it. With the Soulfire Bastion, as I mentioned, you can gamble your uniques. Or you can gamble to get uniques once you beat the end boss. And with the Temporal Sanctum, this is, as I said, the most important one later. This is the Temporal Sanctum key. And... It also says here, if you do level or tier 3, you can now, the Eternity Cache, this is the thing at the end where you can craft your uniques with exalts, with a level requirement of 75 and below. So if you have an item that needs a requirement of 75, like this is 23, if you have 75, you would need, at, you need to do at least a tier 3 dungeon, and in the end you can craft your item. So again, this is the most important dungeon, but... As I said, if you want to skip the campaign with this, it's not really recommended because um, it's going to be all over the place. They, maybe they will streamline this. They are apparently thinking of changing to the dungeons, doing some changes to the dungeons. But so far, it's not the case. One key thing is if you go through the dungeons, it's the fastest way, but I wouldn't say it's the best way. Uh, it's better to play the campaign to um, one to, to Act 5 or 7, depending on your hardcore or softcore character, definitely check out Rex's video. And then do the Kill Majasa, the end boss of the entire campaign, which is in the Divine Era. The Chamber of Vessels, I believe. You get that from the temple and then you, you can kill her. This gives you the bonus. But the key thing is, if you die in the dungeons, because you will... <laughs> Because it's going to be tough for your level 20 character early. Um, unless your build is already insane early game, which is pretty rare. Or you have twink items, which I'll tell you in a second. It's fine. It doesn't matter because you get a lot of XP just from killing these mobs. Because they have they are very powerful, right? So you don't need to kill the end boss or get through the whole dungeon to get your XP. And then you just do it again and eventually you will get through. However, every time you do die, you lose a key. And you have to get a new key again or use a new key to play the dungeon again. Now one key thing that makes this way easier is if you have twink items. That is, for example, some items like this one, they don't have a level requirement at all. right? So your level 1 character can wield this hammer that has 131% increased fire damage, 60 health on kill, chance to chill, 58% increased melee damage, all these kind of things. Or the fire starter's torch, right? I mean, this was a bad, bad roll for me because it added cold penetration to it on a fire item. It was a bad roll, but whatever. So you can build these later yourself in this very temporal, dun temporal sanctum dungeon. Like I did, for example, with this belt. 
see this level will come in 12 so you have a early game character that can run these insane items or you can even forge items because you keep your crafting materials so you can forge your items early in the game to make them better so you can just blast through it and even kill dungeons or the whole campaign bosses soon and fast so you can blast through the thing if you just want to get to the end game because let's be real what you want to do you don't want to play through the campaign all the time you want to get here with the monoliths right this is where you want to get with your art character and dungeons are one way i just wanted to highlight this today and how they work what they do and you can go through the campaign with it but as i said check out rex's video where he explains in more detail what you should do um to go fast especially with the hardcore characters if you play these you should definitely not skip over act seven so yeah and you always need the keys as i said they drop late if you do these monoliths later with your main character they will drop a lot so you really never run out of keys for example your inventory will eventually look like this where you have a million keys um there's a lot of arena keys i don't really need but um yeah i really don't run out of keys at this point especially if you have a build that can easily take it all so that was it for today let me know what you think of it if you have any more questions about this whole topic um and definitely check out rex and his video which explains this in even more detail thank you and see you in the next video now let's play some games